Hey guys, it's John from the VisiCast. I'm joined by Martin Waller, who is a Golden Demon winner, and this is part of a series of videos where we look at a few of his miniatures. So I put it into a playlist so you can watch all of them together. Make sure you check them all out. We have some really detailed discussion and talk about painting and the models and that sort of stuff. It's cool. And right now, we are going to be talking about this uh, Deathwing model. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about the model? Why did you choose that model? Where was it entered into? All that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, this was originally um, done for the Golden Demon Space Marines event at uh, held at Warhammer World, uh, one of the smaller sort of mini demon events uh, they started doing last year. Okay. Um, so initially, when they announced it, you know, and the theme was going to be Space Marines. I was like, you know, I've got to get involved. I love Space Marines. I love anything sort of power armor. Uh -huh. um, and I wanted to do something, you know, sort of slightly different from your usual sort of uh, either you know standard shooting a gun or standard swing the chainsaw all around. So I wanted to do something quite sort of you know unique. Um, and I sort of looked at the um, sort of the death wing and decided I want to do something sort of quite stoic uh, and quite sort of you know, noble in a way. Um, so I looked at the uh, the death wing knights kit. <laughs> Choking me. Yeah. Um, so I looked at the death wing knights and decided you know I wanted to do like a death wing champion with the um, the halberd. Yeah. The halberd Caliban. Um, and uh, and then sort of you know it was all sort of born from there. And uh, just sort of sat down, did some sketches because uh, this is now sort of you know, looking at doing competitions properly, right. you know, rather than, you know, before when I was just sort of, you know, just chucking stuff in at a whim. Whereas yeah. now, you know, I'm sort of looking at things and trying to be a bit more technical, uh, put a bit more thought into it. So when you say sketch out, what do you mean by that? You do literally, literally, yeah, literally get, yeah, literally get a pen, oh, wow. uh, and just sit there, just, you know, sort of rudimentary stick pen. It's, yeah, yeah. it's nothing amazing, you know, we're not talking sort of Jez Goodwin the sketches, yeah. but, you know, literally, I'll have a look. Get a quick sort of rough idea of the sort of the, the shape and outline that I want to do, yeah. uh, and then it'd be a case of just researching the, the parts. Uh, so a lot of this one was researching online about you know sort of what parts of the Deathwing kit I could use that would sort of complement what I want. Yeah, um, which is a bit of a pain because you don't have to buy a whole kit for you know oh, just a little yeah for, for a few a few bits. But um, yeah, the main problem I had with this one was the um, the halberd itself. I'm trying to convert it because the actual sort of halberd in the kit is a two-handed weapon that's sort of held across the body. Yeah. Uh, whereas what I wanted, you know, I needed to be held, you know, sort of resting uh, by his side. Uh, so yeah, it was a lot of sort of chopping and, and sort of, you know, sort of sculpting to try and hide gaps to to try and make it work. But um, yeah, in the end, it sort of came out came out really well. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Why did you do the? I really like the purple in there. Why did you choose to do that purple as opposed to uh, green or something? Yeah, I think the um, the normal sort of you know the, the studio artworks do the green. It tends to be. Yeah. Um, yeah so um, you know, I just sort of kind of wanted to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say, everybody does green and bone Deathwing. Yeah. Um, so I wanted this guy to, to stand out, and that's where the um, the title came in as well. Okay. Because you know, I thought you know if he's being sort of honoured and having you know having this weapon, um, you know he needs to be given a title. So that's where I, you know, the keeper of the blade came from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I just saw on purple. A, because it complements the bone quite well and it looks quite nice. And B, I had a good recipe for purple. So oh, okay. I thought, you know, kill two birds with one stone. What uh, was that recipe? I'm sure people will be wondering that. Right? It was uh, Xerius purple as a base coat. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, an all over wash with Nagaroff Knight. So a thin Nagaroff Knight into a, into a shade with the um, uh, with Lamy Media. Uh -huh. uh, once that's done, uh, shade it again with a bit of black. Yeah. Um, once you've done the black, uh, then start building up that Xerius purple again, and then it works on a 50-50 mix of Xerius purple and Screamer pink. Okay. That's the, the sort of your mid-tone, that 50-50 that colour, and then it's just progressively adding uh, Slanesh grey into the mix until you get that really nice, sort of bright, fine uh, edge highlight, which is just pure Slanesh grey. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, lots of glazes and, and that sort of stuff throughout. Uh, I think the Drudgy Violet, which is the shade, Thin that down into a, into a glaze yeah. using you know your Lamy medium again, and then just start glazing over your highlights just to make sure they're really super smooth. So because you, you in the over these videos, of course these videos you've been talking a lot about using glazes. I yeah. never use glazes. So what what's the advantage to using them, or um, when would you use them? Yeah, glazes you can use to tint uh, an area. Yeah. So uh, for example, you know if you're looking to, um, so for example you've got a, a weapon barrel that you want to sort of tint the colour and get that sort of heat phase. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. purple, yeah. orangey colour. Um, you can use glazes to tint, tint metals, etc. Um, and you can also use it to tie 
colours in and okay. sort of smooth stuff out. So, right. you know, what I tend to do is use the Citadel shades, but just thin them down some lime medium. Sometimes, you know, you've, you've barely got any pigment in it. Yeah. Um, but you're just going over that really lightly um, just to try and disguise all your, your transitions, just to yeah. make it, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more smooth. Very cool, very cool. Um, also, the base is amazing. Uh, so this water effect you've got with all the like autumn leaves in there, and there's also some like moss as well in there. Yeah. How did you approach? How did you do the water to begin with? Like that. Was <laughs> the um, well, initially the, the base is one of the four draw bases. Oh, okay. Um, that I managed to um, to sort of scrounge off eBay. I think it's um, the Alpha Legion character. Uh, so it started off as that, uh, and I've just sort of built it up from there. Mm -hmm. um, the the water is a product called Magic Water that you can get from uh, America. Okay. Um, and essentially, I just wrap the whole base in Tamiya uh, masking oh, tape. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it creates sort of like a little mould, uh, and then just pour the water in, left it overnight. By the morning, it was it was good to go. So you, know, you sort of pull it off, and then you know you've got the clear. Um, clear view from the side. Yeah, because you can see underwater almost. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, what about the and the autumn leaves? They look fantastic. Yeah, the right? leaves yeah. are um, birch pod leaves. Okay. You, know, you can get from most people's gardens. Right. Um, so yeah, you just find little birch birch pods. You can buy them online as well, sort of pre-packaged. Uh, and literally, it's just a case of getting yeah. a leaf, gluing it on with a bit of water effects. Yeah. So on and so forth, and then you know, sort of a bit of gloss varnish to try and tie it all in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, little birch balm pods look, you know. Look the part for 28 mil scale. Yeah, stuff. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Likewise with the um, the little sort of lichen and, and things like that. Yeah, and it's all you know, real, real flowers and real bits from bobs from the uh, from the garden. So yeah, you don't have to sort of go around making stuff. Or, yeah, you know, a lot of it's all there for you anyway. Cool. And what would you say with this model was your biggest takeaway? What did you learn from this? That <clears throat> um, probably not to tinker with things the day before the. Competition. Oh, I remember you saying about this, um, yeah. Yeah, because I decided to um, to add like a, a long flowing purity seal to the halberd um, the day before the competition, uh, which was made from brass etch. Uh, sort of trying to get that to bend around his arm and over the top of his hand um, with a fully painted miniature um, just led to lots of damage and lots of chipping and lots of swearing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but once you'd started it, you, you kind of had to do it. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, you'd hope that the purity seal will cover the damage that you've made. Uh, so that was the morning before the competition, so it was a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare. Um, but eventually, you know, got it, got it done in time, which was good, and managed to get a finalist at Golden Space Marines. Got some good feedback from the judges, uh, as, as you know, they always do. What was the sort of feedback? Was that curiosity? Um, it was just a couple of, um, a couple of the coloured compositions uh, weren't yeah. quite right. So they said to, to adjust some of the colours, uh, like the tilt plate on the, uh, the shoulder. Yeah wasn't quite right, uh, it was a slightly different colour to, to what it is now, um, so I altered that, uh, and just a couple of little blends that, you know, sort of, you know, threw it off, because the main thing when, you know, when they're judging Golden Demon, you know, once they've got the fine vests, they're looking for the amount of mistakes there on the model. That's that, all right. Okay. Yeah, you know, they're, they're not looking for, you know, because everything there's great and everything's yeah. blended well and, you know, all, that rest, all the rest of it, so they're actually looking for mistakes. Yeah. Um, so obviously, our job as painters is just to try and make sure that, to, to limit that. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, there was a few that were pointed out that rectified for the Gondim Classic event right. at uh, Warhammer Fest. So this was then re-entered, and again, I mean, the standard there was was phenomenal. Uh, so again, you know, I was happy to get another finalist's pin for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's him now retired from from competition. Yeah. He's done two. Uh, I won't ever enter anything more than more than twice. So, uh, but yeah, just a tiny little sort of uh, you know weathering and chipping. That was another thing that I sort of, you know, tried for the first time on this model. Uh, likewise, a little freehand dagger on the um, on the knee pad. That was another one as well. That sort of took forever and a day. Yeah. Trying to get right. It was just a case of going back and forward from the red and the bone just to make sure all the lines were straight. Uh -huh. But um, but yeah, yeah, it turned out all right. Very cool. We have Darren behind the camera. Darren, do you want to ask any questions? <coughs> Darren is shaking his head. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, that, uh, personally, I think that one's my favourite out of the collector, although we have got a model coming up which is mind-blowing. Yeah, he, yeah, he's probably one of my favourites, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. I, just, I, I love Deathwing anyway, so yeah. to yeah. see yeah. that... Sort of stoic, oh, stoic yeah. gothic nature of him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he's, he's definitely up there, one of my favourites. Yeah. So, cheers for watching, guys. Uh, as I said at the start of the video, this is part of a series of videos. Um, so if you guys can check all of them out, I put them into a nice little playlist, you can binge on all of them and listen to me and Martin talk for a little while. 
Um, but if you can also like, comment, subscribe, it makes a massive difference. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Cheers.